You are watching On The Shelf, the show all about the library. I am Sabina Simonson. I am the Outreach Services and Volunteer Coordinator for the library. And I have a very special guest with me today. If you have children at home, you are probably familiar with these names. Joey Pixar, Rotten Ralph. Well, the person behind all these characters is sitting right next to me. He is award-winning children's book author, Jack Gantos. Hello, Jack. Hello. Thank you for being here with me. Well, thank you. It's a pleasure to be back here again. First of all, congratulations are in order. Mm. You are the recipient of the 2012 Newbery Medal for yes. your book, Dead End in Norwell. Yes. And quite frankly, the Newbery Award is the highest honor in children's literature. It is. It is. It is. The Newbery Medal actually was named for an 18th century British bookseller yes. named John Newbery. Indeed. And it is awarded annually by the Association for Library Service to Children, which is part of the American Library Association, yes. to the author with the most distinguished contribution to American children literature. Yes, I love that. The most distinguished it, contribution. That is something else. You yes. know, in plainer terms, really. Really. What the Oscars is for movies. <laughs> That's, right. That's what the Newbery Medal is for children's literature. It right? is. It's a very big medal. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's a huge honor. Congratulations. Well, thank you must you. be thrilled. Now tell me, I what am. was that day like? when you got that phone call? Um, you always know that it's going to come somewhere between, if, if it comes if at it all. Comes. If it comes, it'll come between 7.30 and 8.30 in the morning. They like it early, don't they? They do like it early. Um, I had the Newberry Honor before. Yes, you have. And that came early, so I knew it would be early. So I had my bags packed because I work in the library. So in case the call did not come by 8.30, I thought, Tuck your chin in, <laughs> suck it up, buddy, and just get the Move work. on with your life. Move Write on. Write another book. That's right, which I've done. <laughs> so I was giving the cat treats, and uh, I had my cell phone out on the kitchen counter, and it rang. <laughs> I thought, oh, God, if that's my mother, you know, <laughs> I'm going to use that life insurance policy on her. And then, uh, but uh, it wasn't. It was the Newberry Committee, and they, uh, nice. they were all cheering on the other end. They congratulated me. And I wasn't sure if I heard them correctly or not. I thought, did they say metal or honor? honor right. I wasn't quite sure. So when I got off the phone, I said to my wife, I'm, I'm not sure. She said, call your editor. <laughs> so I called my editor. He was in the shower. But his wife handed him the phone in the shower. It's important. It's Jack. It's Jack. He's confused again. <laughs> But as it turned out, it was the best. It's all good. And your mother is proud, too. And you didn't have to take that life insurance policy out of her. No, 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 no. She's very proud. She just doesn't have to read the book. <laughs> Has your life changed in any way yet since you won? And have you started writing your acceptance speech? I've already written the acceptance <gasps> speech. Good for you. Wow, well, way ahead. But you have to be way ahead because they print it in the horn book oh. in advance. And in fact, I have to record the acceptance speech um, the 30th. Oh, the wow. morning of the thirtieth. So I have it all set, and then uh, I record it, and then I deliver it in Anaheim in June. Very nice. At the American Library System. Very nice. Now this is actually the book that ended in Nobel that you won, and the main character is named who? Oh, oddly enough, Jack Antos. It's it's so shocking, isn't, isn't it? It's shocking. Imagine that. Now, how much of this book is autobiographical? Um, I would say that the the foundation. Like the foundation of this house is solid. So and you were grounded a lot and you got lots of nosebleeds. As it yes, I, I had some, uh, prolific nosebleeds as a child and, and that figures into the book. Um, but the town itself, Norvelt, is named after Eleanor Roosevelt. Oh, really? Who helped start that town in 1934 during the American Depression. She came in, a great democratic lady, perhaps our best first lady. She came in, saw poor farmers, poor factory workers, poor um, coal miners, and she decided to help out. And she started over a hundred of these um, towns, these homestead towns, and Norvelt was named after her, Eleanor Roosevelt. Has it changed a lot, Norvelt, yes. by now? When you did research for your book, 
Did you go back and look around, or did you do it all from memory? No, 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 no. All my relatives still live no, there. Okay, so you no, do have family there. Everybody said so. we were the only ones who oh left. Oh my God, really? So what does the town think of their famous son now? I'm not sure. I'm not sure if they're proud or not, because oh. I was going to go address the uh, Norvelt Historical Society, and mm -hmm. just before I got on the plane, they canceled. So I'm oh, not... Oh, how rude. Norvelt, I know. please no listen. You need to give this man the key to your town. What is wrong with you people, Norvelt? Thank you. You are very welcome. I felt the same way. I would think so. <laughs> I know. I thought the Elks Club at least would have had me in. Somebody. Well, on to one of your series of books, Rotten Ralph. Yes. Rotten Ralph is a kitty cat. Yes. Shall we say he's not bad, really? He's just misguided? Oh, misguided is a very misguided kind word. Misguided is a good word. Yes. Uh, Rotten Ralph, is there a little bit of little Jackie Gantos in Rotten Ralph? Possibly? I don't think you could yeah. write a book Be without there being some sort of your DNA in the character's to some degree. So yes, you know, I was uh, I was not a, a bad child. I was just I would get carried away. I would forget to use my manners. I good intentions. Overexcited. Right? Oh, okay. very good intentions. Good intent. Because it seems Ralph always has good intentions, but somehow it goes wrong, and then he'll he'll fix it in the end. So yes, but but you know when I wrote the books, you know I'm, the the entire theme could probably be boiled down to unconditional love. Because even though I would make mistakes, you know, my mother was not rough on me about it. I mean, she would point out my mistake, right. but she wasn't mean. That's how a child learns, though, right? You have to make mistakes in life. Well, yes. How yes, else yes, do yes, you yes. learn? Yes, but some people, you know, are pretty harsh about that you know, with their children. Well, that is true, too. Um, why cat? Why not a dog? Do you like cats? Do you have a cat? Oh, I have two cats. I oh, love so cats. Oh, so you're a cat person. So that's, is that I am a cat person. Cat? And Nicole Rubel, the illustrator, mm -hmm. she and I um, collaborated on the books. And there was a cat, the cat Carew, which the first book was uh, dedicated to. And I got that cat. It was a used cat. And I got it from Harvard University. Wow. And I so thought it was a smart used cat. <laughs> it was a smart used cat. But it, but it was a, uh, a bit of a rough cat. Oh. I know. So I'm not so sure. If its IQ wasn't <laughs> wasn't overshadowed by its baser intentions. Now you you've mentioned Nicole and she illustrated these wonderful books with your cat there. And yes. how, can you pick an illustrator? This one you started out together working on these books. How yes, does we it did. usually work? If you need an illustrator. Can you pick one? Do you have a say in this? Because I'm thinking, as you write these books, you have a picture in mind of what Ralph looks like, of what the characters sure. look like, sure. and then Nicole, as a friend of yours, might probably be easier to understand what you want to do, but if it's yeah. somebody you don't know at all, how does well, that work? Well, it is a collaborative effort, and so you have to have faith in your illustrator. So even though I've written the story, and I might have my own you know, sensibility about right. about what it should look like. You have to trust that Nicole is going to also fill that in in her own right. imaginative world because you're both two artists working hand in glove. And so you can't overwhelm, you can't dominate the other. But I think that uh, we met each other, we met each other at a party, we talked about children's literature, we both liked it, we were both students. I was a writing student, she was an art student. We got together, we put them together, and it went from there. It worked out. It, it worked out. It was kismet. She was very, very good, and her imagination is brilliant. How many Ralph and Ralph books are there now? Twenty. You guys are good at this, aren't you? Mm -hmm. um, or maybe just long-winded. Then there is the Joey Pixar books that you have. And yes. Joey comes from a somewhat dysfunctional family, and then he has ADHD to boot. Um, why pick such a subject that's maybe a little different than children's books? Um, when I grew up, I went to 10 schools in 12 grades. And so I was always the new kid. And the kids that would befriend me were the kids a lot like Joey, the very active right. kids. They were friendly. They, you know, they'd sort of churned through a lot of the other kids in the classroom and maybe worn them all out. And so I was like new blood. And 
So I always knew kids like this, and they were great kids. And what people would fail to see is they would, they would always see the disastrous results of their behavior, but they would never really see the intention of their behavior. And there's a disconnect between what happens is and what you. is intended. And you, you bring that intention out, and that is so beautiful, and that's probably one of the reasons these books are so immensely popular. They are very popular. I have to say that it's now part of the curriculum across nice. the nation. You must be so proud. Well, I am, I'm very pleased, yes. You know, when you write a book, you, you like it when people read it. You, you do. Don't go anywhere. We'll be, we'll be right back with more On the Shelf and more of Jack Gantos. Welcome back to On the Shelf. I am here with Jack Gantos, Newberry Award winner for his book, Dead End in Norvelt. A fantastic book. Jack, thank you so much for being here with us. Thank you for having me. Now I have to ask you this. Yes. You have had, a, shall we say, interesting youth. Oh yes. Um, maybe a bit of trouble, a short stay in club fed. Oh yes, 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 yes. What turned your life around? Um, when, well, when I was uh, right out of high school, you know, and I was really interested in writing books, and I started to go to college. I went up to University of Florida and I wanted to write books, but uh, University of Florida was more like a large football program mm -hmm. with a small academic institution, like a tick attached to the side. So I didn't want to go there, so uh, then I tried to write books on my own. I couldn't do that, and then I just got involved really with um, some British... People. Yeah, the wrong people. A nice uh, team of British drug smugglers and uh, so I joined that happy group and ended up with a six-year sentence in a federal penitentiary. I only did a year and a you, half. I was just about to say, yeah. you didn't do all that long. No, 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 However, no. However, that's, the, the, that's the, a wake-up call, though, I would think. Yeah, that was a wake-up call. But tell me, from drug lord to children's book author, where does that leap come in? <laughs> well, that's quite... It that's, is quite a leap. That's what an steps arc. steps were taken there? <laughs> yes, yeah, so that's more than 180 so, degrees. So let's paint this picture. You were yes. sitting in your cell, and yes. you're thinking, darn, this didn't work out for me. Yeah. I need to do something else. Yes, I need to do what I, I should have been doing all along, which is really paying attention to the things that I loved. And I always loved books. I was a very bookish mm -hmm. child, and I read an awful lot. And so when I got out, I went immediately into a BFA program at, at, at Emerson College, and I started uh, writing books for children because I always liked those great characters. I mean, how can you not like Max from Where the Wild Things Are, or Cricket in Times Square, or Charlotte's Web? These books right. really, you know, shape you when you're growing up. Right. And uh, I wanted to be part of that. And I don't know why I was trying so hard out of high school to be something other than <laughs> what I was when this is really what my affinity is. Now, if this wouldn't have worked out, mm. what do you think you would have been? Well, I was a professor for years, too. I was a professor of children's book literature and so writing. So there still would be something in the writing, something in the teaching, in the writing, in oh, the yes. book genre, something... Oh, yes, I, I would, would always be, be bookish. kind of work, wouldn't it, then? Yes, I'd become a librarian. I've always wanted to be I a like librarian. That. You can work with us anytime. Oh, anytime. Anytime. I write, in fact, I have to tell you, I write, all of these books were written in the library. I like that. This is a yeah. person who's actually using the library. Now, actually, are you working on a new book right now? I am. I have can to, I have to write, uh, it, it was a book that I had started before I won the Newbery Award. Um, which is called From Norvelt to Nowhere. So it will be the, uh, it'll just be a, two, a, a second book, oh, the Norvelt okay. book. So where this ends, the other one starts, or will this be the prequel? No, 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 that's, that's the first one, and then, and then, and then, we'll, then we'll carry on carry from there. On. Yes. Oh, good for you. When do you think that will come out? Oh, everybody wants it to come out soon. Yeah, well, um, I don't think so. <laughs> but it has to be written. So um, I'm working on it. Now, how does it work, the writing? Do you write when you have time and not touring from 9 to 5? Do you write when inspiration strikes? Do you write in the middle of the night? How does your typical work day look like? I'm very, uh, I'm very consistent in, in that. Uh, usually, I get to the library at 9. I, I usually do all my work at the Boston Athenaeum in Boston on the fifth floor. I'm there so often, I have a locker. 
And then I go there, I go in at nine, I do two hours of first draft writing, two hours of second draft writing, two hours of reading, and two hours of research. And then I walk home. Oh my God, you're incredibly disciplined. You have to be. If you want to write books, the, the thing that separates people from writing or not writing books is really the discipline to do it. Which kind of leads me to another one of my questions. Mm -hmm. What advice would you offer young people who want to write or want to write professionally? Be disciplined, obviously. Well, be disciplined. Um, the, the reason I put this out here is to anticipate your question. This is my fifth grade diary. And so when I talk to students, I talk to them about getting their journal set up like a real professional writer's journal and to write 10 minutes a day and give themselves a, a, uh, a discipline so that they can develop that habit. Even if it's short, 10 minutes a day, 10 minutes right. a day, minutes. it builds up. It should us. I tell myself that with 10 minutes of exercise a day. I hate exercise. I think the 10 minutes is not so bad. No. You can do 10 minutes, so write for 10 minutes a day. Yes. It's um, consistency that counts. And discipline. Yes. You have narrated some of your audiobooks? Yes, Dead End. And we have Dead End and then Hole in My Life? Yes, I, I, I narrated Hole in My Life. That's my memoir about being in prison and about becoming a writer. And then Dead End, I, I narrated that. The Joey Pigsa books I narrate, and the Rotten Ralph books I narrate. What is the process like? Do you enjoy doing it? You do so many of yours. Do you like doing it? Oh boy, I have to tell you, it's really intense. You have two days to record those books, and you were in a soundproof booth, and you the whole book in two days. Oh yes. Oh my God. And you really have to stay on task because you have to develop uh, the voices, yes. you have to deliver all the emotions, yes. and you have to have the right pacing, and you really, you do about eight, 16 hours, maybe 20 hours to get uh, I had get no idea it was done in two days. There's nothing That's left of me when insane. I walk out of the, the studio. So. I mean, I literally crawl from the studio in New York City to the hotel, and I don't go out. I oh order room God. service, I stay absolutely horizontal in bed, and then get up and do it again, and it's just nearly terrifying. Insane, but well worth it in the end when you then listen to it. Well, the engineers are brilliant, <laughs> and they make you sound brilliant. Now, do you have a favorite character of any of your books? It's a tough question. You know, it's like, which one is your favorite child, right? Well, that's really what it boils down to, and of course, you know, every parent always goes, well, I love them all equally, right, right, but, right. but we, we know they have fair. Lie. Yes, they do lie, they fib. Uh, you know, it's a white lie, but they're just trying to protect the other children, the bad children's do. feelings. Of course. Um, right now, Dead End in Norvelt is a big favorite because mm -hmm. it won the Newbery Award, so, yes. you know, and, and also it won the Gold Scott O'Dell Award for the Best Historic Fiction, so it's uh, actually a double gold award winner this year. Wow, you must be on cloud nine. I am. If I just could get some sleep, I would really enjoy <laughs> Call of Nine. What are you reading when you do get a little bit of time? Do you read your own books? Do you read somebody else's books? What do you I like generally, to read? After I write a book, I seldom ever read it again. Really? Yeah. And usually I forget it. I could open a book to any given page and, and have no memory of writing that page. So they, they just sort of get washed out to make room for the the creation of the next book. Wow, you don't read them again. No, I generally don't. Do you like any other books? Do you read? Oh yeah, other I read all the time. And you, any favorites that you want to mention? Oh, I love. Anyone well, that well, more than others? Oh, what genre do you like to read? Children's books? Do you read? I read mostly um, adult books, and I read mostly nonfiction. Okay. So I'm reading uh, Gold Hill's books right now on his uh, literary tours through England to famous writers' houses. Um, and I'll read the history of books, all the Bass Bane books I really love. Any book on bookishness and book collecting, I read all of those, and the history of books. Now, you were, as a child, a somewhat slower reader, a bluebird reader. Yes. What advice do you have to kids and parents out there that might be struggling with this? Because look what happened to you. <laughs> so don't give up on your kids, that might be the best advice. No. <laughs> Kindly, Mrs. Niederheiser, my first grade teacher, put me in the bluebird group, but you didn't know that that was the slow reader group. You were just a bluebird. Which sounds uh, nice. Oh, look, a bluebird. I know, it's so kind, instead of looking at the genre, you're slow. Um, 
And so what has happened is I've always been a very sort of slow-paced reader. But when I finish a book, I've completely taken that book apart. I read the white space. I look between the words. And it's like reading a book with a right. marrow spoon. I dig you everything dig. out. And I, so I remember all the books that I read. I don't remember the ones I write, oddly enough, but, <laughs> but the ones I read make a wow. big impression on me. Really? Mm hmm And so I don't mind being a slow reader. I'm a thorough reader. You know what? Maybe that's what it is. There's absolutely nothing wrong with the speed of which one reads. No. I always uh, had read that John F. Kennedy was part of the Evelyn Wood speed reading approach. And, you know, I was talking to somebody about that. I was talking to a husband and wife who read the same book. She's a slow reader. He's a fast reader. And when he read it, he skipped over the ending. So he always thought the book wasn't finished very well. And then he started talking to his wife about it. He, re he realized that he, he read so fast, he missed he the missed. ending. That's quite sad, isn't it? Well, yes, a little bit, I think. <laughs> Speaking of endings, unfortunately, we need to say goodbye. Oh. Thank you so very much for being here with me. It's a pleasure sitting and it, here and talking to you. Well, it's a pleasure to be here, and I love your library system, Thank and they've you. been so supportive. Thank you. Don't go anywhere, because On the Shelf will be right back. Welcome back to On the Shelf, and I am still here with Jack Gantos, because I have wonderful news. Actually, the Tobit County Council declared April Library Lovers Month. How cool is that? That's brilliant. That is brilliant. And we received a proclamation, and this is what it says. Whereas libraries have historically served as our nation's great equalizers of knowledge by providing free access to all and by acting as a forum for diverse ideas and points of view that help us better understand each other and ourselves. And whereas the expansion of electronic networks linking libraries and the resources makes better makes possible better and more easily accessible information for library users around the world and whereas 22,631 people in Talbot County have library cards and in 2011 there were 190,440 visits made to the Talbot County Free Library and the public computers were used by patrons 33,996 times. And whereas the Talbot County Free Library offers preschool story hour and summer reading programs to encourage children to begin a habit of reading that will serve to benefit their personal and professional lives. And whereas the Ottawa County Free Library provides entry to important research about health, economics, housing, the environment, and countless other areas to support better living conditions and to help people lead longer, more productive, and fulfilling lives while supporting a competitive workforce with basic literacy programs, computers, and other resources to help children and adults learn to find, evaluate, and use information they need for their jobs, health, education, and other needs. Now, therefore, be it resolved that we, the County Council of Talbot County, do hereby proclaim April 2012 as Library Lovers Month in Talbot County and urge everyone to visit and use the valuable resources offered by our libraries. Wow, it's a mouthful, isn't it? It is, but it's very meaningful. It, it is absolutely meaningful. We are thrilled, and this was presented to us at the council meeting and to the friends of the library. And I actually want to thank Carla Howell, who is the president of the Friends of the Library, yes. who also owns this beautiful B&B we are in for hosting us here today. She's very thoughtful. And her husband, Pete. Thank you very much, Pete and Carla. And thank you, Talbot County Council, for thinking of us. Now, April is also National Poetry Month. Yes. And you might not notice, but I always close my TV show with a poem. That's lovely. Thank you. So graceful. I wanted some kind of really cool signature line. You did? And now I've accomplished it. Now I have poems. Okay. That's all me. And for Poetry Month, I found a poem that is called I Don't Write Poetry by Eric Cockrell. I don't write poetry. I sweat poetry, I drink poetry, I breathe poetry, I make love to poetry, 
I fight poetry. I eat poetry. I bleed poetry. Too often I betray poetry. Sometimes I drop poetry. Once I tripped over poetry, got angry and kicked poetry. I rocked poetry on a sleepless night. I buried poetry on a hill. I lift poetry, for I am poetry. No, I don't write poetry, but poetry writes me. It's very lovely. Not a bad poem, is no, it? No, no, not at all. I like the part about I dropped poetry. <laughs> Kick poetry. <Yes. laughs> but poetry writes me. And speaking of poetry writing, our poetry contest award mm. will be on May 10th in our brand new library at 6 o'clock. We hope you all can come. The winners will be there. They've actually been selected today. I will be the MC, and I look forward to welcome you all there at our new library. And don't forget our grand opening in Easton, May 5th. Saturday. Woohoo! We are so looking forward to it. We'll see you soon again from On the Shelf. Goodbye. Bye now.